At some point in your life, you would have heard about the global issues like air pollution, global warming, and poverty. But have you actually heard about the loss of biodiversity? Has anyone actually addressed it as a global issue rather than a biology lesson? Well, the loss of biodiversity has been greatly impacting each and every single country in this world, and all these countries have been taking extreme measures to decrease it. Biodiversity basically means the variability of life on Earth, and that includes the diversity of species, genes, and ecosystems. But today I want to bring importance to the biodiversity of species and how it's been decreasing in an accelerating rate, and what you and me can do about it. Honestly, I didn't know much about biodiversity or animals until I studied it in grade 10. The only thing I knew about animals was from watching Animal Planet on my TV. But then after studying it, I realized that biodiversity and animals are so crucial to us. They're very, very crucial to our lives. And even, even though they're so vital to us, we end up killing them and decreasing their population. And I'm not talking about livestock like cows or chicken, but I'm talking about animals we don't see every day. For example, oryx, otters, and orangutans. Why do you think we don't see these animals often even though we're living in their habitats? And that's because we are living in their habitats. That's because we humans have invaded their habitats and claimed it as our own territory without even trying to coexist with them. And not only that, but we've slaughtered these animals, we've killed them, and as our population increases, we're no more killing these animals just for food and cloth, but we're killing them to satisfy ourselves, for our own pleasure, to satisfy our so-called exquisite taste buds, along with our human greediness, to be victorious and dominative. Where according to the World Wildlife Organization, pangolians are one of the most trafficked mammals in the world. Especially in China and Vietnam where their meat is considered a delicacy and their scales are used as traditional medicine. But then, did you know that an estimated 1 million pangolian has been pouched in just 10 years? Can you believe that? Not only that, but we've killed these animals through an indirect way by our increasing population which includes urbanization, pollution, and deforestation, causing these animals and plants habitat loss. To justify, Georgia Astor, a bewitching thin lady dressed in purple, is currently one of the endangered flower species in the U.S. due to urbanization and herbicides, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Organization. These examples and these numbers greatly signify that the earth is going through a Holocene extinction that we sadly caused. And I'm sure that until this day, a lot of our parents and grandparents still come to us and tell us about how much the earth has changed and how the sight of animals running freely in the wild or in the streets was an abundant sight in the past. And every time I get told that or someone tells me about it, I get really sad. I get overwhelmed because I wasn't lucky enough to see how much green and colorful the earth was in the past. I wasn't able to see animals running freely without worrying about us killing them. And it also breaks my heart to know that these animals, these innocent creatures and plants and animals have to die because of our thoughtless daily action. And it's common to think that not all animals are useful or how are insects important and why do we have to preserve all biodiversity when we can only preserve the important ones? Well, these thoughts are not right. They're very faulty. Because even though we can't see it or feel it, but every animal, every plant, and every species is important as they play a big role in maintaining the Earth's balance, where even the tiny, tiny, tiny bacteria help in regulating the Earth we live in, the water that we drink, and the air that we breathe. One of the most important species that are decreasing in population due to human factors are bees. Without bees, the Earth would go through a devastating reality, where more than 70% of its plants would cease to exist, 
therefore distorting the food chain and resulting in us facing a food scarcity. And it greatly worries me that our future generations, including my children and grandchildren as well as yours, will have to suffer the consequences of this generation's mindset and actions, which are like the poison that killed Romeo and Juliet. And that's why we should be responsible and take actions towards this loss of biodiversity. As mentioned by the Ministry of Environment, the UAE has been taking extreme measures to ensure the conservation and development of wildlife, which includes establishing and expanding protected areas for the purpose of protecting and reintroducing endangered species in their habitats. And let's be honest, I'm aware that this kind of action seems impossible for ordinary citizens like me and you to perform, yet that doesn't mean we can just sit around and do absolutely nothing about it. An efficient way to participate in the conservation of biodiversity is getting involved in these ecological restorations in your local sanctuary by volunteering, donating money, and raising awareness. Moreover, we can introduce the use of biodegradable products and organic foods in our daily lives, where they're becoming more accessible to everyone, including me and you. Organic food is not only good for the environment where it's produced without the use of pesticides, but it's also healthy for us, for humans, as they lack artificial hormones and antibiotic and contain less fat. Also, we can reduce our waste and the use of electricity. The more we can reduce, our demand for new resources will decrease. The less habitat conversions will be necessary to get these resources, or the energy to make the products we demand. The less waste goes into the landfill. All these small changes in our lives will, can greatly impact our local biodiversity, making it a flourished environment. The conservation and re-establishment of biodiversity is not a short-term objective that will be completed in a year or two. But actually, it's a long-term process that involves the patience and hope and the involvement of all people, including you and your family. Therefore, don't hesitate to make a change, especially when this change is to the better for me, for you, for us, and for the upcoming generations. Thank you.